Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We are honoring hashtag Transformation Tuesday, and we have Alicia Oxy in the house. She is an actress, author, podcaster, and you have really been able to capture what transformation is. Like the one moment, that one audition, you truly <laughs> transformed people's <laughs> lives, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, um, <laughs> The po yeah, the podcast, that one audition, yeah, they're pivotal moments as well as uh, the moments that don't go so well. And what I hope is that people understand that, you know, you're constantly a work in progress with your art as well as yourself. Which is where life letters <laughs> right? oh, yes. comes in. Yes. Take us back to the beginning. What was the inspiration for writing this book? Um, well, first of all, there was no inspiration to write it as a book. It was mostly just for myself. I was engaged to a really lovely man and when we were in the process of breaking up, I lost all of my friends. Like it was a big pivotal moment. So my best friend and I went on our pseudo honeymoon <laughs> and I didn't speak the whole time I was there and I just kept praying like, tell me how I can write him a letter to get him to understand me more. It was constantly on him. Like I wanted him to realize that I'm great. Like, why don't you want to marry me? And then we hiked up Mount <laughs> Mount Sinai, and I'll never forget the whole way up there. I kept praying, kept praying. Shooting stars were going by, and I'm like, I'm gonna get answers at the top of this mountain. I mean, Moses got the Ten Commandments. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. Whoever's the big guy in the sky is gonna give it all to me. We get to the top, and I'll never forget. All the constellations were out. But then there was a perfect question mark. Oh. And I was Whoa. so angry. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> like, and I remember looking at my friend, I was like, am I seeing this? Like, what if, like, there's nobody. Then there's just nobody. You don't know either, like, what's supposed to happen? So the sun comes up, we hike down. I'm terrified of heights. You know, there's the cliff edge. All these things are happening. And I just started praying. I was like, I just don't know then what I'm supposed to do anymore. And clear as day. The letters are for you, is all I heard. The letters are for you, right? You need the support. Because I didn't have that support system mm. built within myself. And I think in order to really truly help yourself, it has to come from within. Everybody around you can support you and give you the advice that you need to hear. But if you're not settled in yourself, how are you going to receive it? So I was like, okay, I'll write myself letters. Like, I didn't know what that meant, but I started this process and it completely transformed who I was, even down to the man that I'm married to now. We were friends during that part, point, and I never saw him that way. And um, I ended up publishing these for my wedding because the last letter that I opened, the topic was travel. And the first le uh, line to myself was, whoever asks you to go on vacation, you must say yes. And uh, we had just been friends and he asked, he was like, do you wanna go to Israel? And I was like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> myself says I have to say yes, and I was like, uh, yeah. And then here we are. We've been married for three years. So I published the books at that point for the wedding, and also people kept asking me like, what is this process that you're doing? And I felt really selfish holding on to it because it helped me. So the book was just if it helps one other person, right? Wow. You know, it's a delight. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. I'm wondering how did you really teach yourself to trust your own intuition? Uh, well, I did a couple of different self-help practices. I treated myself like a partner. You're so forgiving, you're so open, you're so excited when you meet a new partner. So I tried to turn that on myself. Like I tried to be excited and um, give myself that forgiveness. And at the end of every letter, I wrote, I love you, which sounded so cheesy and it was so hard for me to write. But then at the end of my first year of letters, I felt, I felt love for myself. I felt excited for myself. Beautiful. I felt forgiveness for myself. Yeah. It's and I, so relatable. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I embraced my flaws, like know your strengths and know your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And I figured out those and how I can I just accept who I am. Right, I love that you're relatable and vulnerable like that. Cause I think people out there probably view someone like you. They're like, oh, she's made it. You know, she must just be born. <laughs> like it's just easy for her in life. And I think it's so important to share your story. And so thank you so much for doing all that. What would you say for someone that's out there that has not found that inner voice, that has not started writing to themselves? Is this a book about that for them, for them to Absolutely. write letters? The, the one thing that I, I don't like calling it a self-help book because I have my own issues with self-help. <laughs> thousands of self-help books that end up either making me feel worse about myself 
or <clears throat> excuse me, it just takes me forever to finish. So this is 57 pages because nice. I want you to be able to read it at lunch and go, oh, that's cool. I'm not doing that. And I didn't spend six months waiting or, oh, I really like this. I can do this. So it's a very simple step-by-step -step process and it gives some examples in there. I do truly think that in order to help yourself, you have to have patience. Like we all expect it to be better the next day. And when I was, I was very much depressed. When I was depressed, somebody said to me, enjoy this time because you'll never be as creative or as full of life. And I was like, how can you say that to somebody that's depressed? That's so weird. I do miss that time mm. because I was really grounded and centered in myself. And it did take, a, it took a year for me to like fully come around. So anybody I think that's in a struggling place right now, like just give yourself time. You give your partners time, right? you give your children time, you give your family time. Give yourself time to come full circle. Right. Well, I'm going to take a little time for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it doesn't take me a year. <laughs> it shouldn't. And, and it's such a great, you know, we're all voracious readers here. And um, I just love books. And I particularly love thin books because I always felt like the challenge is to say what you want to say, but say it quickly and simply and effectively, you know? And you've really done that with this book. And oh, I just you. want to point that out. Who have been some of the authors that have inspired you? Oh, I am a huge fan of Jodi Picoult. Do you guys know who she is? No. She has written so many lovely books. What I love about her books is every chapter shifts to a different person's perspective. And I, I love, as wow. an actress, I love that. Like I just, um, when I went on this pseudo honeymoon with my best friend, I read eight of her books during that time. I wasn't talking much on that. <laughs> 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 to, to Jodi, I was like, thank you for all your characters. It was a silent treat. But so she's always been my favorite go-to. Wow, I love yeah. that. Having the opportunity to play other roles, did that help in your own personal healing? Oh, this, like this whole transformation well, at yeah, this point? Well, yeah, you're just personal transformation. I mean, has there been anything you've learned from the roles that you've oh, played? Yeah, I mean, so there's so many rich roles that I've been able to have the privilege to play, and I think they all kind of live within me. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, I usually tend to gravitate towards the really misunderstood characters or um, bad characters, as people call them. So what I've also, what I've always learned is just that everybody is just a turn away from understanding themselves mm -hmm. as well as um, having the world understand them. So I think that maybe helped with just the patience and perspective, constant mm. perspective. That's so that beautifully said. Absolutely. I remember listening to an interview before when you mentioned there was there was a certain audition that you had with Mark Teshner. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Mark knows all these details. So um, I quit a bar job in May. Just like, I, I was like, I'm just done bartending. I had a couple of acting jobs that came through. Well, I didn't do a really good job of saving. So I literally was down, I had less than $100. I know that. I don't remember the exact amount. Um, I got this audition for General Hospital. And it was one of those things where every friend I saw, they're like, oh my God, are you going in for General Hospital? I read this and I thought of you. And I was like, this is, this is a nice feeling. But it was a very ethereal, kind of out there character. She spoke in rhymes and it, <laughs> it was an interesting character, but I was so excited about it. Like I don't, I just dove right into this like whimsical kind of character. So I had a three or four auditions with Mark who is by far the best casting director to have opposite of you. It's not a casting director. It's a very warm environment. Like he said, he knows his lines, he's off book. He gives you so much. And we had so much fun during the audition. So during the test, um, one of my other girlfriends, Cody Kitchen, who was repped by the same management company, also was testing. So we went in, we did our things. I went in before Cody and I came out and I just bawled. Mm. I think because she'd been with me for so long. And that audition, particularly the test, I did some really outlandish things. I remember I, asked, I took off my shoes. I was kind of like floating around the room. I kneeled at one point. At, I'd lost complete control of Alicia and the woman in white had really blossomed. So when I left, just this like disconnect all of a sudden, like I didn't know if I get to play in her world anymore. And also I didn't know how I was gonna pay rent. So just the flood of emotions came over me. So much so I couldn't drive back home. <laughs> so wow. I drove to my manager's office so I could just sit there and collect myself. Not thinking that she also reps the other girl. 
So I am bawling in her waiting room, and I was like, I am not an emotional person around auditions like this. And she didn't know what to do with me. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm going to get myself together. And then, I was like, <laughs> and then the phone call comes in, and you know it's Mark. And I was like, oh, this is horrible. I am going to be bawling in her room, and they're calling to book Cody. I just had that. I was like, oh, God, here we go. Um, side note also. Before this, I was meditating a lot, and I did a walk on the beach, and I was like constantly just trying to practice keeping myself present, and the thing that came through was there's enough for everyone. So I just focused on that. There's enough for everyone. There's enough for everyone. Went into the audition, sitting, bawling, crying. And I'll never forget, Susan came out, and she had her hands above her head, and she was like, well, I'll be damned. I was like, uh, just tell me. Tell me. She's like, you both got it. Wow. And I then I was waterworks wow. crying even more. Because I was like, what do you mean? How did we both get it? They gave Cody another part, and I got the woman in right, and we both got to work on this this show together. We wow. had dressing rooms across from each other. Oh. But it was such a testimony to there is enough. Like, there is enough. We don't have to be competitive with each other. And I've always had that feeling. I don't know why I'm built this way, but it makes me, it gives me so much joy when my friends work and that just was a true testament to that feeling for me yeah oh so, yeah well speaking of let's take a little break and we'd love to bring mark back and yeah. speak with both of you together and hear about the journey and what it's been like so stay tuned you guys we'll be right back Welcome back to Good Morning La La. We're talking about transformation and how these two amazing people came together in their one moment that shifted and transformed their lives. So cool. I love the story. Oh, thank Did you. Did you know all that about the past? I didn't know the background of the, you know, emotional breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> so from your opinion, what happened during that audition when she spoke to the woman in white? Okay, well, first of all, in my 28 years there, it was... It was the strangest role I'd ever had to cast. Um, character's name was Woman in White. I don't think you even had a name other than Woman in White. I didn't for like eight weeks after she <laughs> And it was, this, it was this very uh, ethereal role with rhyme and poetry. It was a complicated role. And one of the most challenging, because you had asked earlier, was a challenging role. Um, but I remember the callback, the final callback. We were in the producer's office. I read with the actors. And it was a room of producers. And I, I very vividly remember your audition. Um, you took your shoes off. Mm -hmm. And then at one point, you came to me and you kneeled down and did the scene, half of it, like on your knees. And when you left. <laughs> <laughs> you made a strong choice there. <laughs> but, but, but here's the beauty of it. And, and it relates to kind of what you're talking about, where an event happens and when you left aside from that you were you're a lovely actress people were so the room was so connected and the writers were in the room too they were so connected to the fact that you did all that and, and connected on the knees nobody had done that and it was so spontaneous and in the moment and it's a great example of you know you talk about paths and oh this happened and that happened you did the work, you know, you, it, things don't spontaneously happen if you don't do the work, but you did the work and something in that moment became very real and authentic. It's not like you were, I know for a fact you weren't rehearsing, I'm going to take my shoes no. off and getting down on my knees, yeah. but it was brave, it was very vulnerable, mm -hmm. and it basically was the catalyst for the conversation that got you the job, and it's nothing you planned, it just something happened there was something very authentic about the moment and that's a great example mm. of you just sometimes you just have to take a chance and go on this mm. gut instinct and i it's one of the auditions that i really i mean obviously i can't remember every audition <laughs> but it was one of the auditions that i totally remember yeah. Yeah. yeah i think that was why i was so wrecked afterwards because everything that i did in the room every time i went in to audition for you something different came out and i just i treated it like shakespeare and i every night would really work with it so what i did in that final call back. I left and I was like, what did I just do? <laughs> I took my shoes off. I was kneeling and I was so vulnerable that I think that's why I bawled. Like it really evoked some crazy emotion out of me. Wow. And then, yeah. right? and then I was really like, then it was like, what do I do with this character? Right. Well, we're <laughs> we're very touched yeah, it was a, by it, was right? It was uh -huh. a tricky role. It was fun. It was but, Shakespearean. Right. Um, yeah. And I do believe that when we're touching and growing into a new 
you know, character of our life, a new chapter, a new form, a quantum leap, if you will, that we have to let go of something. And I know that that probably that crying, that emotional release was letting go of something that really was ready to be let go of so that you could go to the next level. Absolutely. I think as an artist, there's an element, a facade of control. And I feel like that was the first time in my career that I really let the work come out of me and I didn't control how the audition was going to go. So therefore, I was so surprised even with my own work that that's what evoked that emotion. Like I left and I was like, oh, I didn't I didn't do what I planned or I didn't control it. Mm -hmm. And that was a beautiful lesson for me as so an true. artist. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for everything. Sure. We really appreciate it. It's an amazing transformational Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And just want to say thank you guys for all of uh, joining. Please like, share, and comment. Important to support the people that you love, the actors that you love, the shows that you love, because there's so much noise out there. It's important to stay tuned to what is your truth, right? Absolutely. We are Good Morning La La Land, America's first live streaming daily talk show coming to you Monday through Friday, live at 9 a.m. on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. It's going to be a good morning, La La Land. Cheers.